Welcome in to another week of Locked On Cubs. On today's episode, we discuss a really difficult week and weekend for the boys in blue. But more importantly, we're going to talk about you, the fans, and how should you feel right now about this baseball team and the state of this franchise. After that, we're going to talk a little bit about Juan Soto and some fantasy trades. Maybe Juan Soto ends up in a Cub uniform. And uh, then we'll talk about the draft and the all-star break in the week ahead. It's going to be a packed show, so come in on, and join us. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into Locked On Cubs, week three, back on the home front for myself, Matt Cozy, alongside Sam Olber. Thanks for joining us this week. Going to be a great week, all-star game, home run derby, a lot on tap this week, which we'll preview later in the program. As of this moment, the Cubs have scored eight runs this week. We are recording as the game four of Cubs and Mets is about halfway through. The score is one to one in the fifth. The Cubs have scored again. Eight runs all week. It's been a rough one, Sam, and uh, certainly some uh, imagination we're going to use with Soto later on. But for right now, uh, tough times. This is the most difficult regular season I've ever been a part of as a Cubs fan. Uh, I know that sounds crazy. There's there's 2012. Well, first of all, this team's on pace to be worse than all those teams. But I genuinely thought, Matt, going into the season, that this was a 75 to 80 ish win team. Worst case has been this. Best case could have been, you know, 83, 84. I thought it was more likely that they'd be co competing for a, you know, maybe four or five games out of a wild card spot at this point than be one of the worst teams in the league. So I am surprised. But I, I, and we'll talk about the, the lack of clutch hitting. You know, we, we've talked a lot about on this show about the pitching and the lack of pitching development. And that's more of a long term thing. The present right now in the past has been not able to, do, to deliver big hits consistently. If you see my, if you watch it on YouTube and you see my eyes I'm just kind of tracking the game as I speak here as the Mets are threatening to break this puppy open but uh I really want to talk about the fans Matt and I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this because I had some really nice interactions as you were out doing your thing all week in Iowa City and at a wedding in Minnesota I was grinding every pitch of this ball club I know you uh, were I've th th this is the first uh, set of pitches that I've missed all week um, and that, that, that's not good for my physical or mental health. It's, right. It's actually pretty impressive, but yeah, you do look a little pale, but continue. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't feel good. Um, with that being said, I was talking to some fans and some awesome fans that DM me privately, some, some in the yeah. public, uh, Twitter sphere. And they were asking me like, Hey, like, do you think we're part of the problem? Right. Like, they, like, like rooting for this team and enabling them and things like that. And, you know, because there's so many of these popular Twitter accounts that like hate the Cubs. And, and, it, and it almost seems like it almost seems like, Matt, that they're rooting for the Cubs to fail because they want to blame ownership for stuff and they want to just make these stories and and all that stuff. And here's what I say. First of all, I'm never going to tell fans how to fan. If you want to be apathetic and you want to be done with this team, you, you have every right. It's your money. It's your time. It's This is discretionary. You know, everybody works really hard. If you don't want to waste your time watching a bad baseball team, then I'm not going to tell you to. But if you're somebody like me that no matter what, just because of the way you were raised, you have to watch every second and that's just who you are, um, don't, don't apologize for that. What's happening right now is that we are paying for the mistakes of Theo Epstein, Tom Ricketts, and Jed Hoyer from years ago. That's how sometimes, Matt, it works in sports. You don't see these mistakes on the day-to-day -day surface in, in baseball until two, three years after they happen because they hurt the system. The Cubs – you're seeing those mistakes. Hopefully the good news is, is that two, three years from now, we'll start reaping the benefits of some good decisions that are happening now, like rebuilding the farm system. But I want to emphasize something, Matt, and I have a sneeze coming. I want to emphasize something really important. Just got to start, got to start dusting over there more. Yeah. In this season, Matt, in this season, 
this season in a vacuum, this team has greatly underachieved. And people are going to say, what are you talking about underachieved? They're not a good, they don't have a good roster. You could still have a mediocre roster and underachieve. This is a, sure. a, a 70 to 77 win type roster. And yes, they've had some injuries, but you look at Suzuki, Horner, Hap, Contreras, Morell's contributed. Wisdom has been better than you thought. You still have had Hendricks and Spurts, Stroman and Spurts. Uh, um, the, the, the pitching injuries we've talked at nauseum have crushed them. But this week, the pitching has been extremely competitive. It's the offense. Steele Thompson have emerged. This should not be one of the three or four worst teams in the league. And the fact that it is, is a problem. And everybody it, it deserves blame for that. Jed Hoyer, it's his roster. David Ross, when you, when you underachieve, Matt, the, the manager, I mean, look, look, the Toronto Blue Jays and Philadelphia Phillies already fired their managers for underachieving. Now that's, that's underachieving to a point where you know, you're supposed to be a playoff World Series team and you're not. That's where you start losing your job. Nobody's ever going to get fired for a team that's supposed to be mediocre, just being really bad, but it's not good enough. You know, Daniel Norris is used in a huge spot yesterday and then DFA the next day. That thought process makes no sense to me. Uh, uh, Christopher Morell at the plate against Max Scherzer doing a hit and run with one of the greatest swing and miss pitchers of all time. That makes no sense to me. There's a lot of things from a managerial perspective that make no sense to me. This team being bad, the point I'm trying to make, and I'll swing it over to you, this team being bad isn't a, oh, let's just blame ownership and blame this and that and because that's the easy thing to do, and oh, we're the Cubs and we're not supposed to be like this. We knew going into the year this was not going to be a great baseball team because of mistakes we already talked about on our first show. Okay, With that being said, separate that for a second and just talk about the 2022 season. It is alarming how bad it's gone. It's alarming how much they've underachieved. Now, next year, two years from now, is that going to matter, the fact that they're going to win 62 games instead of 75? No, it's not. But it's still alarming and concerning. And and as I said, the most frustrating season I've ever been a part of, some of these games. Yeah, it's a lot. I know. I, I know I said a lot there. I know. The, 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 the main thing I wanted to just say, if you want to just comment on this, is Please, if you're a diehard fan, continue to be a diehard fan because all those people that are telling you to, to go do something else, when this ball club's good again and they will be good again, they'll jump right back on. Yeah, the diehard fan part, I guess for me being a fan, especially with the Cubs, because that's the number one in my rankings, as I've said a couple times already on this show. This is episode hope 10 so. We're of the new iteration. The yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't I don't think it my my support isn't necessarily gonna waver, but I'm certainly gonna have thoughts and opinions and ideas, but those aren't gonna waver either. Like I'm gonna stand strong in those and, and try to get to some conclusions, especially from the perspective now of actually talking about the team five days a week, by the way. You know, this is which this has not is, been easy, by the way. No, and this is so deeply connected to us. I mean, listen, my cousin Anthony. Just got married on Friday night. Yeah. Literally at the end of his speech, Sam, his welcoming speech, right before the dinner, at the end of his, his speech, he goes, go Cubs. <laughs> I mean, it's everywhere. Right. And and I know you got into some interactions on Twitter. I would love to bring some of those up in a minute or two. Yeah. But the fact is, is that there were a lot of alarming things that has happened with this team. Okay. If you want to get into some deeper discussions, deeper conversations, which shoot, I think maybe we should pursue that over the all-star break or whenever it fits in organically. Sure. You know, you could make an argument that Theo Epstein ran away from his problems. Sure, of course. You could make an argument that 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 all of this is is, is confusing. And confusing is never a, a, a good mentality um, for anything in life. Clarity is necessary. And the amount of clarity right now with this team and, and what they're going to do in the future, it is hard to see. It is hard to talk about. And they are playing a little bit more poorly than we thought they would. Um, a lot more. As, by the way, the Mets take a 2-1 lead. I'm just game casting. Looks like it was a routine pop-up to Schwindel that wasn't caught. Go ahead. What? Gosh, yeah. a lot of routine plays missed. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think anybody should, should be dismissed from the conversation. You know, I don't think anybody should be deflected of blame. You know, does 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 every? It's not like everybody's going on trial here, but when the Cubs can't execute a rundown and three throws or less, 
And you say, oh, well, that's not on David Ross. Well, Who's why it isn't it? Uh, yeah, why? Besides yeah, that, you that. typing that it's not, huh. can you explain to me why it's not? Because I'm around baseball from, from March to July basically every day on my own time. And I get it. It's the big leagues. But these are things that need to happen, Okay. Communication defensively, communication on relays. We know about the base running. We know about the situational hitting. Um, you know, how much is that as coaching execution? It's all a blend. And, yeah. you know, there's 70 games left after today. That's not that much. Um, if you look at where they are, they're only on pace for about 60 uh, something wins. They would have to go exactly 500 to get to 70. Um, you know, this club, especially with trades, is 100% going to contend, okay, the negative connotation contend uh, for the worst spot in the in the sport. Yeah, outside outside of maybe like Oakland and the Nationals. But um, look, let's, let's just close this by saying I just want to – because it's such – this is so complex. I've never dealt with right. a situation like this with this team. The first rebuild, it was obvious. Everybody was on board. But because they just had a great stretch, people are just so like – testy and weird about it so i just want to make my stance perfectly clear as, as the host of this show and hopefully uh you guys will, will will tag along with us for for years to come i totally understand why the cubs are doing what they're doing and i'm on board with this mini rebuild however this season should not be the way it's gone it is not it, 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 i i thought and i said this on our old show 77 to 80 283 yeah. win team, a little transition year, and then next year we're ready to flex our muscles. This season and how poorly it's gone and the luck and the one-run losses and the lack of clutch hitting over and over again is alarming. That's the word I would use, is alarming. Two, two double-digit losing streaks most likely in the same year, alarming. And you look at the general manager for that. Of course, the owner has a say in that, but I think he's going to he's gonna uh, uh, get on a lot of people's good side this upcoming offseason with some spending. And you look at the manager, you look at the players, you look at everything. This team being one of the three worst teams in baseball is unbelievably alarming. And it's upsetting, and you should be upset. But if you don't want to, if you want to keep watching them like I do, do don't apologize and don't listen to other people. Don't let other people tell you how to be a fan. We love the Cubs, and that's why this stinks and it hurts. And it's 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 really, as we said this last show, it's tough to watch. Do we want to? So I am uh, entertained, albeit uh, mildly. Although I'd like to ramp it up a little bit, if possible. Uh, by the the back and forth with David Kaplan of ESPN 1000 and NBC Sports Chicago, um, I don't know how much you want to get into that, but but yeah, the yeah. fact is is that no one tagged him. He he responded to you guys. I don't know if you noticed that he he actually responded. What was his response? I I don't know. Well, no. So so after the initial tweet. Um, he he decided to, to chime in into the conversation. Right. I think it was from 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 Sam, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But then he never responded to my response. No, he he hasn't yet, which is yeah, interesting. It was, it was just a just it was just a simple uh, uh uh this guy on Twitter, Sam, who who I know actually was just saying that David Ross isn't doing a great job and David Kaplan, like being David Kaplan, who I like and respect, you know, said I think he's doing a great job. He has absolutely no talent whatsoever. Uh take hashtag take that. My response was I listened to David Kaplan before the season on his own show say that he thought this Cubs roster was gonna surprise people and be not bad. And so if you think that before the season and think that there's some talent on this team and they're one of the worst teams in the league, you have to blame the manager some. This is a bad roster. It's not 34 and 58 bad. That's the only point I was trying to make. And when you underachieve, the manager needs to be held accountable. There's at least 10 or 10 to 15 games this year that David Ross, I think, has done has made some really, really the decisions I just don't understand. And, and yesterday, bringing in Daniel Norris, he walks Guillerme. Uh, uh, he could have walked Guillerme and just kept Michael Givens in the game, one of his best relievers. Instead, brings in uh, Daniel Norris, 
uh, to, to, to go left on left with Guillerme, who, who you know is going to walk him anyway, and then he throws the ball in the center field, and the pickoff, you lose the game. Just little things like that. It is, my point was to David Kaplan that like everyone wants to protect Rossi because he was a part of this. Rossi this, Rossi this. We'll have a longer segment on this. I just don't think he's done a good job this year. Neither is Jed Hoyer with this club. Ricketts, uh, uh, Hap, Contreras, all these guys deserve blame. But he, he, he definitely deserves some, and let's read an ad. Juan Soto talk is up next. First, I want to tell you about Blue Nile. Make your engagement moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Cubs listeners. Get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. Use the code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress free and find your forever piece of wedding bling. Go to BlueNile.com today and use the code Locked On. I'm still getting used to uh, being back in my makeshift studio here. I just yes. uh, I just saw the pop up to Schwindel. <sighs> enough already! Wow, and that was after enough already uh, a couple previous times last week to Daniel Norris. I said enough already to Daniel Norris I and said Matt enough Swarmer. Al- enough already to Matt Swarmer. They're both off the team. And uh, VR pre-show. Yeah, pre-show and and and. I, I'm not saying to DFA Schwindel, uh, uh, but at first base, enough already. Okay, we've seen enough from him. You know who I'd like to uh, see more of? Enough is, already. Is Juan Soto, yeah. the Nationals outfielder, apparently turned down a massive offer from the nation's capital team. As that's a called strike three to Contreras, he's now three for his last 42. But let's please do everything we can to extend him he can't catch he can't hit he's now hitting in the low 250s but give him everything because that's my backstop (laughs) shh (laughs) tap strikes out swinging another all-star we'll head to the we'll head to the six it's new york two chicago one on the brink of a 10 game losing streak do 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 oh that's the cbs music yeah well whatever oh talk about Soto. I would love to. I would love to talk well, about Soto. Stop interrupting me. Later this week, we're going to get into some trade proposals. I, I, I'm whipping one up right now. It's not quite ready. It's still got to come out of the oven. How about um, Norris and Simmons? <laughs> <laughs> that could, let me tell you I don't something. I know why I thought that was that funny. It, wasn't, it was actually was one of your, let me your, tell you your, something. your, that- your lower grade stuff. If you offer that to to the Washington Nationals, they wouldn't even give you a Jefferson Memorial tour for those two guys. <laughs> wouldn't even let you. They wouldn't even let you see the Lincoln Memorial. Norris won't be picked up. Come on, There's stop no interrupting. Chance. Talk There's about no Soto chance. Already. You're interrupting. Oh, is it me? Yes. Hey, Juan Luke's Soto is one of the best players in baseball. He's only 23 years of age, and he's going to be available. Possibly starting this month, but more than likely this off season. And sure. it part of sports. The fun part of sports is to imagine activity happening with your club, especially okay? when your team, especially when your team hasn't won a game in three years. Yes, and the fact is, <laughs> it's going to be ten in a row in about the hour hour and fifteen. <laughs> uh, the fact is, is that. The Cubs are going to have some players in their system, as we've talked about the last few episodes, that could be used as capital for any trade and possibly a Juan Soto deal. Um, obviously, it's exciting that that he would be available. I, I would be curious if a move happens this, this month. I don't think so. I think it is more likely November, December into the offseason. But this is one of the best players in the game, Sam. He, he really is a, a, a new age Ted Williams, okay? Walks more than he strikes out. Hits at a high clip, although he, he's hitting for less of an average this year. High OBP every year. And he has legit power as well. Yeah, I'd go easy with the Williams. Great player. Um, one of the one of the best, if not the best pure hitter in the game, you know, has that unique combination of contact, incredible eye and power has experience hitting on the biggest stage and the highest leverage situations. He's comfortable. Um, he's probably the biggest asset right now in baseball. Like if you were just to do like a trade value of every player, I think he'd probably have the highest. He's not a great defensive player, but 
his bat, I mean, it's just it could be it could be the best bat in baseball for a decade straight. Um, so talking about the Cubs, why why are we linking them to the Cubs? Why are people linking to the Cubs? Well, it seems like Soto likes a big stage. It seems like he, he wants to be on a winner. Obviously, that's not the case for the Cubs this year, but we hope that that's soon to come. Chicago's a big city, and the Cubs are probably one of the, I don't know, seven or eight teams that really have the assets to put together a trade that the Nationals would be intrigued by and still not completely deplete their own farm system. Mm -hmm. You're talking about PCA. You're talking about Alcantara. You're talking about Hernandez, Brennan Davis. Uh, Those are are guys that any ball club would be intrigued on. However, However, with that being said, I would be very surprised if the Cubs pulled the trigger. Not if the Nationals pulled the trigger, because they're going to pull the trigger on the best offer, and they're going to have to be blown away, overwhelmed. They're mm-hmm. going to be doing they're going to be doing uh, bidding wars between multiple teams. The thing with the Cubs is they're so far away right now, as it stands, from contending. Are you willing to deplete everything you worked for? Because the only positive thing you have right now in your back pocket is your farm system, and it took you it, it, it took you a a disaster of a second half last year, a disaster of a season this year to rebuild that farm system. And are you willing to, to risk depleting that for a player like Juan Soto? Now, my, my answer would probably be no. I don't think they're going to make a deal like that if he's still available at this time next year. That's a totally different situation. That's a totally different situation. However, I would be fine with it. Like I'm never going to complain about getting probably the best player in the game on my team or the best hitter in the game on my team. I just don't think – I think it would just be counterproductive from Jed. Here's him making these fans sit through this horrendous season um, and, and this horrendous stretch, but but telling you, hey, look what's going on on the farm. Look what's going on on the farm. Oh, now we're going to get rid of all those guys just for one guy. And you don't have to look farther than the Los Angeles Angels to say, hey, you could have two of the very best in the game and still doesn't translate exactly. to winning. So I, m- my guess would be no, but I'm not sitting here and saying I'm against it. Um, let's just see how it plays out. And, and I do think if I had to, if I, if I were ranking his most likely destinations, I think the Cubs would be in the top five. Yeah, and someone can correct me if if need be, but I think Soto, as high profile of a name he is in the sport, yeah, is is still a little bit lower profile in terms of brand and personality. I wonder how much he could elevate the Cubs as a franchise. I still think he brings a lot of good things, uh, but if we're talking about about that the the coolness factor, if you will, uh, I think it would get a lot of people excited for sure. I mean, it's always you know, to confuse activity with achievement, you right. know, you're never going to replace the, the one, one well, over the other. See, um, I yeah. think, I think he'd be really valuable. Um, I think he'd be really valuable in that sense. I I, I do think he's okay. got the person personality. I just don't think that, that the nationals are the team to showcase it for. My yeah. whole thing is, is if just, if you put Juan Soto on this team, you're still not very good. So I, I like to see them make a move like that when, when they have a better infrastructure at the big league level. But like I said, I'm never going to say no to a Juan Soto deal. So we'll see what happens. It'll be fun. It's fun to chat about just any, anything, anything to not chat about the current product. Yeah, more more would have to happen to, to build around him as well. And the Nationals have a lot of leverage because he's signed through 23 and, and 24. So they can certainly right. they can uh, wait. wait and see on a deal. Uh, Before we preview the rest of the week, we wanted to let you know betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including all things baseball. Head to betonline.net or download the app to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. And we start this final part of the show, Sam. Uh, I, I think it would be good to have more Soto discussion. Um, I'll put the uh, the text and, and voicemail line up there three one two eight three four four six three four. I and think he, this this week is as a lot of open waters, especially leading to to Thursday uh, with with no games. So we're definitely right, looking we'll, to get in the feedback zone. And we'll talk about the draft on our show tomorrow, which will which will uh, drop Tuesday. We like I said, we're we're recording this in the afternoon on Sunday because I had some some plans come up a little bit later than I expected. So. Um, yeah. Any, 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 any voicemails or texts that we got this, uh, from, since we read less that are any good. 
No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, there's a couple on marquee. So I'd like to kind of house those in one bucket still for later this week and then follow yeah. up on that. Um, because I know that you're keeping them as accountable as they can be. Um, it's a bad all- product. The home run derby and all star game this week. I have some great memories as a Cubs fan of those two entities. Uh, not sure how excited I am that for the next two days, I will watch. Um, and, I need a break, I, man. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Uh, but a lot of good good times with with Cubs uh, in those two events over the years. And then we wanted to let you know that we are planning to go live at 8 p.m. Central Time this Thursday. So this will be recording our normal Friday episode, um, just like we would in one take, uh, like we have now that this first couple of weeks of shows. But now you can be a part of the action as well. And so that's going to be 8 p.m. Thursday, Lockdown Cubs on YouTube, video exclusive live. And then I'll be pushed out as an audio episode normally uh, overnight Friday. Um, Anything else as we start week three in the saddle here? Uh, yeah, you, you, you made me laugh on Twitter today, and I'd like you to answer your own question. What was your favorite run of the week? Yeah. My, uh, my, my, mine was that Jan Gomes bloop double. For a yeah, run. Jan Gomes somehow drove in two runs off one of the greatest pitchers in our generation yesterday. Yeah, I'd have I'd have Scherzer I'd have Scherzer right there. I think Kershaw gets a gets a gets a gets a, a, a he's underrated. Look at you rolling right into it. Go, look at Kershaw's base, baseball reference page. I know he hasn't had postseason success, but my word. Yeah, I think mine was the Ian Happ home run, which feels like three years ago. Yeah, no, there hasn't been many Ian Happ home runs, so that was a rarity. Uh, there hasn't we, been many home runs. Well, I saw, I saw, I saw some. I, th- I think uh, I heard this today. The Cubs, right when we went on here, um, fifty-five straight innings without a crooked number, and fifty straight innings without a home run. Ah, do 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 do. Be a part of the Get one up in the air and find one in the basket for everything that's holy for the love of God. Great for the week. love of God. <laughs> Man, enough, enough, stop, enough trying to recap the show and somebody inject to some steroids and hit a ball halfway up the bleachers around the base. Or just do it organically. Uh, you know, no steroids <laughs> necessary. Yeah, well, the Simmons Simmons is going to need some juice. He needs something. As, he, as he's on the IL, by the way, $4 million down the drain. Close out the show. Yes, uh, no, the, the low value buys, Jed Hoyer hasn't really hit on many of those. Be a part of the journey with us. Subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and everywhere you get your podcast. Subscribe to Locked On Cubs on YouTube as we make the push to 1,000 subscribers. And follow along with us on Twitter at Locked On Cubs. And remember, you can leave us a voicemail or drop us a text, whether it's about Juan Soto or otherwise, 312-834-4634. Thanks for making Locked On Cubs your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby, who has a busy night tonight with the draft, is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. For Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked On Cubs.